ancient Greek robotics. The Odyssey is one of two major ancient Greek epic poems attributed to Homer. It is one of the oldest works of literature still widely read by modern audiences. Like the Iliad, the Odyssey is divided into 24 books. Here is an excerpt from the book, translated into English. There's no one in the world, mean or noble, who goes without a name once he's been born. Parents give one to each of us at birth. Tell me your country and your people, your city, too, so ships can take you there, using what they know to chart their passage. Phaeacians have no pilots, no steering or, like other boats, for their ships on their own can read men's hearts and thoughts. They know all men's cities, their rich estates as well, and quickly skim across wide tracts of sea, concealed in mist and clouds, without a fear of shipwrecks or disaster. Phaeacians refers to their ships. Note that these ships do not use manpower at all and drive by themselves. Note even that you input a specific destination and it travels by itself. Does it use GPS technology? Say it is the most remote of places. They went there and, without any effort, made the journey home in the same day. Hydrolysis Engine Commonly known as Hydrogen Fuel Cell, see Stanley Meyer for its modern iteration. Basically, you input water, or H2O, and through efficient hydrolysis, you receive oxygen, emitted, and hydrogen which you feed into the engine, which consumes hydrogen. The hydrolysis cost is lesser than the gain from burning hydrogen. A ground vehicle, a car for example, using a hydrolysis engine isn't as efficient as a ship for the following reasons. 1. A water tank is required to fuel the motor. This tank adds weight to the ground vehicle. A ship requires no water tank, infinite water is below it. 2. Higher surface friction than a ship. 3. Water is flat, no uphill driving. As for efficiency, Stanley Meyer used AC, at very high voltage, in a specific frequency, to loosen the water's bonds, despite having low amperage. No additives required, only water, even tap water, and energy to boot the engine of course, for example small battery. If a man alone figured all this out, you think the ancients didn't have a polished version of this. To give you some food for thought, salt makes water more conductive, and the sea is full of it. That is the secret of the Phoenicians, a mysterious civilization which was hugely influential, yet you cannot even find a single book in the Phoenician language, not even a trading record. There remain around 70 Phoenician inscriptions in the entire world. The Phoenician language was reconstructed from the bilingual inscription of Sipi of Melkart and the Purgy tablets, which is just four lines each. Definitely satisfying for an accurate recreation of the language. So, we really don't even know their grammar or vocabulary. Of course it's claimed we do. It's easy to fill the gaps with extrapolation after all, especially using adjacent languages Etruscan for example, but it is inaccurate. Ultimately, all the Phoenicians' achievements are redirected by historians to other civilizations and cultures. This kind of ship explains the Phoenicians' naval dominance and culture, their worldwide influence, Phoenician artifacts from Greenland to Egypt, even to Brazil, and by extension why they are borderline erased from mainstream history and exist as a footnote. We have no special gift in boxing fights or wrestling, but we run fast. We're the finest sailors. But. If in ancient times there existed advanced ships, surely there must be more advanced technology mentioned elsewhere? Indeed, the vast palace of the Phaeacian king was guarded by intelligent automatons. On both sides of the door stood gold and silver dogs, immortal creatures who would never age, created by Hephaestus's matchless artistry to guard the palace of great-hearted Alcinous. Note that gold, silver, bronze are the most conductive materials in the world in that order. They are ideal for robots. She found him working with his bellows, moving round, sweating in his eager haste. He was forging twenty tripods in all, to stand along the walls of his well-built house. Under the legs of each one he had fitted golden wheels, so every tripod might move all on its own into a gathering of the gods at his command, and then return to his own house. They were wonderful to look at. A wheeled tripod, moving on its own by command, wow. Then he pulled on a tunic, 
and came limping out, gripping a sturdy staff. At once he was helped along by female servants made of gold, who moved to him. They looked like living servant girls, possessing minds, hearts with intelligence, vocal cords and strength. They learned to work from the immortal gods. These women served to give their master detailed help. Robotic Intelligent Servants Gold is the most conductive of metals. So the most practical material to construct such an advanced machine is gold. Coincidence? Aristotle's Metaphysics For all men begin, as we said, by wondering that things are as they are, as they do about self-moving marionettes, or about the solstices, or the incommensurability of the diagonal of the square with the side. For it seems wonderful to all who have not yet seen the reason, that there is a thing which cannot be measured even by the smallest unit. Automatons are such a common trope in ancient Greek works. Back in the age of Atlantis, you think their technology was wooden ship tier? Despite having a terramorphed island, three rings, and a vast sea empire, they bound it all together with wooden ships? No distant orders by radio signals? Here is a question. What happens when a cataclysm sinks a continent and pretty much everyone dies worldwide? See Plato's Timaeus, literally first 12 pages explaining that the only remnant for Greeks was their language and some infrastructure. Or perhaps you think if 95% of the population was deleted tomorrow, we would be able to construct cars, CPUs, fridges and computers? No. The chaos would invite war, status quo disruption invites further chaos, which would result in more of the survivors dying. Even the roads become unusable. In your technology, resets to a primitive societies. Cataclysms happen periodically, as explained in Plato's Timaeus. Technology is erased and later reinvented. Nothing is new under the sun. And that's how Greeks knew of these automatons. Weak in cargo called artifacts preserved in lore. Do you think it's hard to invent electricity? Just wrap a bronze coil in granite motion. Or you think making a GPS is impossible? It's just stitched images. A glorified 2D array with the addition of four IDs to each image for which image is adjacent to it. As for routes, it's just a tree of points XY. So advanced. No way could they think about such an advanced technology. We are smarter than them. And the deeper you search into ancient Greece, the more automatons referenced. Most moving statues are credited to Daedalus, with Daedalus first appearing in literature in Iliad Sigma 590, where Daedalus built a mechanical dancing floor for Ariadne. And did I mention Argonautica, Jason and the Golden Fleece, Talos, the bronze giant protector of Crete, who patrol the island. Mind you, all ancient Greek references we're talking about here are from literature. If you look into the real world, archaeology, you will find solid, touchable proof of structures which simply couldn't have been built by hand, proof of the technology of antiquity. With a popular example being, the Antikythera mechanism, which we will discuss in the next episode.